hello hello welcome back to my channel and a deep dive into the many goals and resolutions that i've made in the last few years and oh how times have changed if you know me i love setting goals i love setting resolutions but i feel like i'm also very realistic with them and flexible with them and not self-punishing with them because we don't want that. We don't want that at all. I personally find it really useful to set goals and resolutions as a way of setting intentions and understanding what my priorities are, but I am also aware that priorities change depending on life events or world events or just willy-nilly as the winds take us and that is okay. So I recently discovered an annual plan that I made three weeks before I found out I was pregnant. I was part of this accountability group called Jack's Creator Club, Jack Conte, the CEO of Patreon, and it was me and a bunch of other Patreon creators and we met weekly over 12 weeks and talked about the business of being a creator and supported each other. And we did lots of exercises and talked to various different experts on different topics. And one of the things that we did was create an annual plan. And I recently found mine again because I made this and then found out I got pregnant and then just completely forgot about it. I remember being on the final few, like three or four weeks of those calls, of those weekly meetings that we were having, feeling like shit in my first trimester and not being able to tell anyone. I was like, <laughs> this is so hard. But I thought it would be fun to look at this annual plan to see what I had said and what I had set out that I wanted to achieve in the following 12 months and then compare that to the reality <laughs> of what happened. But then also, I remembered like three years ago, just before the pandemic hit, I made a five-year plan. So I figured now might be a good time to like check in to see how that five-year plan is going, see if we need to make any adjustments, see if anything's need to go in the bin, or if I'm, you know, on track, who knows? And then I also want to take a look at the resolutions that I set at the beginning of this year to see how I'm doing because we are a few months in now and resolutions are those things that just go often in the first couple of months and so I wanted to use this as an opportunity to like recheck in, remember what my priorities were at the beginning and see where we're at now. I'll probably do a whole other video doing like a mid-year goals check-in with the goals that I set at the beginning of this year. So you'll have to look out for that in the future. And this video is sponsored by Skin and Me, and I'll talk more about them later when we're talking about resolutions. But for now, let's dive in to this annual plan. Guys, I made a PowerPoint presentation for this thing. I think it was because we had to share it with the group, and I'm going to give you said presentation now. Are you ready? <laughs> oh my God. So I wrote this in August, 2021. And the next page that we're going to see is my vision statement. And Jack encouraged us to write a vision statement that was kind of like manifesting. You wrote your vision statement from the perspective of you 12 months in advance reflecting on the last year. That's what we're about to read is me, August, 2021, not knowing that I'm gonna get pregnant any day now writing as if it's me in August 2022, reflecting on this past year that hadn't happened yet, but now for us right now, it has happened. Is anyone else confused? Are we following? Let's just read it. So my vision statement in this hypothetical, but actually it's already happened, August 2022. And this is what I wanted to have happened. Okay, in the last 12 months, I have felt so free. I have a team around me that works like clockwork and I am no longer the bottleneck for all decisions. The podcast rebrand went amazingly. Oh my God, yeah, we were working on like the whole rebrand of the podcast. Okay, and the guests and episodes have been so fascinating. Our Instagram is popping with the new colors and the video elements look great and seamlessly integrated into the rest of my content. We also finally launched the Doing It Book Club. Eee! 
which is a wonderful community project. We reached a thousand patrons and had an epic virtual celebration party. YouTube is still my creative home and it feels so much more manageable. Everything is going so well that we started exploring in-person and virtual events, workshops and experiences, and I could take a proper holiday. And I'm pregnant. <laughs> I manifested it. I manifested it. I do not believe in manifestation, but clearly it works. Okay, what is going on here? So I do have an amazing team around me. I think I'm still a little bit of bottleneck for decisions, like big decisions, but I'm no longer the bottleneck for like the things to get done. Um, so that's great. It feels so good now. And that's since hiring Mia, my creative producer, who I hired at the end of 2021. She started in January, 2022. We did a big podcast rebrand and the original plan was to have like highlights, video episodes on my YouTube channel and on Instagram and then full video episodes on the Patreon. There was like a whole system involved and there wasn't a huge amount of work involved in doing the editing of it. However, I felt like shite and it was my job to do all of that. And we had to like put the podcast on a hiatus whilst I was sick from my first trimester. And then also like the videos tanked on my YouTube channel. And I just don't think we like designed the assets well enough. However, now, we're fully leaning into like reels and TikTok with the podcast and we are doing them in a different way. So like the way that the video itself is designed, like the template, the asset is different and that is working so much better. So we got there eventually. <laughs> doing it book club, man, this is just always on my like forever to-do list. I think because since Banging Book Club ended, I need my like sex book club outlet, but I also just have no time to read any books right now. So. I need to cross that hurdle first before I can then like make <laughs> a book club out of it. We reached a thousand patrons. I think I hit a thousand patrons at one point and then it went back down again, which is very normal for Patreon, but we've never been consistently over a thousand patrons. I'm still dreaming. I'm still dreaming. If you want to support what I do, Patreon is an excellent place to do it. Amazing community. I love it. YouTube does feel so much more manageable and absolutely no to the in-person and virtual events and workshops and things. Imagine, imagine. I did kind of take a proper holiday, not maternity leave, that's not a holiday. And then, yeah, I was pregnant and I had a baby. By the time August 2022 came around, I had a baby. I was like coming back to work then. August 2022 is when I was coming back from maternity leave. That's so interesting. So yes, right, next. Key results. Okay, so they wanted us to talk about like specific things. So that was a bit more like woohoo. And then this is more like concrete metrics. So 1000 plus patrons, still not there yet. It's fine. <laughs> Hire creative producer, done. Hire a researcher slash writer. We kind of work with different freelancers for this. So it's not like one solid person, although we do have someone that we work with on like quite a regular basis. And then like other people like on an ad hoc basis. So yeah, done. Podcast getting 100K downloads per month. Everything is down since coming back from maternity leave, podcast, YouTube, the lot. Not this channel. This channel <laughs> is popping. I don't know, I don't know what's going on, but this channel has been doing really well since I came back from maternity leave. Keeping everyone afloat. I am no longer worried slash don't care about my YouTube channel dying. Do you know what? I think I've made it. I think it's taken me like 12 years, but I think I've actually made it to that point where I don't care. <laughs> is that what having children does to you? Like, I just don't, I don't care. Like, I don't think it's gonna happen, but if it does, it's not the end of the world, is it? It's fine. Wow, okay. I'm able to take a break for longer than two weeks. Well, I did take a break for three months to raise a child. I am still raising said child. <laughs> this is tricky because before getting pregnant, the maximum amount of time I'd ever taken off work and also posting was two weeks. Then I took three months off of posting content and that actually has been detrimental to my channel, to the algorithm, you know, the podcast, my Instagram, like all of these things. So it's kind of like my fears were correct. So that's a tricky one, but we have reduced the content. I feel like I can't really take a huge amount of time off, but I have to take time off because when like his child mind is closed over the holidays, I have to take time off work. So we're factoring in more smaller breaks, but then I'm parenting on those breaks, so <laughs> fun. 
Okay, areas of focus. Okay, so now we're like broadening out how do we achieve these key results. So my areas of focus were outsourcing, experimentation and community. That's so interesting because I think that is 100% where I'm at now. Less so the outsourcing because I feel like I've, I've done that. I don't think there's any like more new team members that we need to bring on currently. Taking videos off my plate and making everything so much better and like running smoother and stuff. Experimentation. This is something that I've 100% started doing if you've seen on the Hannah Witten channel since the beginning of this year with having like different guest hosts and different like formats and styles and like more out and about stuff. Some experimentation with reels and shorts, not live streaming, podcast clips, not on YouTube but yes on Instagram and TikTok and stuff. I'm feeling good in the experimentation category however I do feel like we went so hard on it because we were so excited at the beginning of this year that actually I've like run out of steam a bit and I'm struggling with ideas at the moment, but that kind of just ebbs and flows and you just kind of have to trust the process, you know? And hopefully it'll come back. Community, yeah, community is always huge and even more so now because essentially you can kind of go like two routes in terms of like business financial model. Like if you were me right now, there's like two options. Either we try and be as popular as possible and really go down the like maximizing potential of thumbnails and titles and videos and topics in a way that has like mass appeal so that we can get sponsorships and like the ads that run on videos. So like all of that is so much more to help fund everything or we don't worry about all of that and instead we go deep. So my priority actually isn't about gaining new viewers, it's about converting current viewers into patrons because one patron to me is like worth a hundred, a thousand casual viewers in terms of actually being able to keep the business afloat and fund all of like the sex ed content and stuff. So that's my focus and the community part of that is so important. And yes, running patron special office. It's been a couple of years since I've done one of those, but there are plans on the horizon. Lots of text here, but this is what Jack Conte called a retro. And actually I think he's done YouTube videos going through like his retros and annual plans for his band Pompamoose. So then you look at what happened in the last 12 months, what worked, what didn't work and what improvements you want to make for next time. But let's just look at the improvement section. You can pause and read this <laughs> if you want. But if we look at the improvements and that'll give us an idea of like how things have gone. Hire creative producer, researcher writer, tick tick. Quit Twitter. I didn't even do that on purpose. I still have my Twitter account. I think this was even before all of the Elon Musk stuff that I would have written this. But essentially I announced my maternity leave and then I just haven't tweeted <laughs> since. But even before that, all I was ever posting on Twitter was just links to videos when they went live. And that's not gonna have like a massive effect on the viewership of the video. And so it's just like, this is pointless. I'm just, I just naturally stopped using Twitter. Oh, wow, okay. This is so interesting. So back in August, 2021, I wrote experiment with different publishing schedules, three weeks on, one week off. And actually I completely forgotten about this, but since January, we've been doing two weeks on, one week off on the Hannah Witten channel. And it's working really well. <laughs> Definitely making the whole thing more sustainable. Experiment with reels and shorts and live streaming. Live streaming is a no-go at the moment, but reels and shorts and TikTok. I'm trying guys, I'm trying. <laughs> it's going fine. <laughs> okay, revamp pleasure trove. I'm not really sure what I meant by revamp here. I guess doing like the guest hosted stuff was like an attempt to revamp it. But actually, I kind of think that Pleasure Trove has like died its natural death. You know, it's just, sometimes just series just fizzle out. We don't need to make a big announcement that they're gone. But even so, I don't necessarily not have any plans to not bring it back. That was way too many double negatives. What do I mean? I just don't have any plans to make more episodes of it. But that doesn't mean that I'm completely against it coming back. We'll see. More community projects slash events, book club, involvement in videos. Oh, so the second part of this, the involvement in videos means more the community interaction in stuff. So like using 
Instagram polls or the question box feature and then using that in videos in terms of like sharing my audience's experiences with things or asking people to send in like video or audio clips to edit into stuff. The latter takes so much more time in terms of like making the video and like going through all the clips. So we haven't like attempted one of those yet, but it's a possibility if we think a video would be good for something like that. Make the doing an Instagram account more dynamic, not just a pattern of still posts, audiograms, video stories, reels, etc. Yes, I think we've been doing this and I really like how it is. Interestingly though, my assistant Moog, when looking at the analytics of the podcast account, still found that selfies of me tend to get the most likes and engagement. And I had specifically been like, oh, let's post less selfies of me because when I look at the feed and I just see loads of me with my headphones and mic on just wearing different clothes every time, I get bored. But hey, Instagram. Instagram just loves people's faces. Interesting. Okay, that's the retro. That is interesting. I feel like not much is different. Like I've kind of accidentally done a lot of these things. And you know what I think it might be? just the process of thinking about this and writing it all down, even though I don't actively remember doing this or what I'd put here, it had like subconsciously put into my brain what my priorities were. So even though right after making this, I then spent the next two, three months on the sofa feeling horrendous and not being able to work. When I then was able to work again, but I had, you know, not as much energy as I had before, I was really able to go, this is what I want, this is what I need, this is what we're doing. So that's really cool because a lot of these things have panned out, I would say. Next up, let's see how I'm doing with my 2023 resolutions. <laughs> So I had a bunch of different categories for my resolutions. The first one was me. And my first resolution was about tracking my reading. So not wanting to like set a number of books, but getting better at tracking my reading on Storygraph. And just looking at my resolutions now, I'd completely forgot that one of them was about tracking the kids books I was reading because I have not been doing that. So now I need to figure out what kids books I've been reading and add them to my story graph. Good job I checked in with this because I'd forgotten about that, but maybe because it's not really a priority for me, but no, I want to track my reading. But my actual me reading, I have been tracking, even though I've not read that many books and I've just been getting through the Stormlight Archive. I'm on the final book, not the final book, as in like the last one, the most recent one. There are going to be more, but I am on Rhythm of War. It's very exciting. My second resolution was to continue doing one second a day, which is this app and you like film and you create one second a day and it splices all together and it's very exciting. And I have been doing that and I haven't forgotten a day yet. 17th of February, I got you this year. I got you this year. So that's very exciting. And then one of my big resolutions this year was transcribing my five year diaries. And I'd worked out like how many hours of <laughs> writing these up that I would have to do in order to get them done by Rowan's birthday. And guess what guys, I finished them and I finished doing it a month early. Boom, that resolution, nailed it, nailed it. Granted, I didn't have a life in the evenings after Rowan went to bed. I just sat on my laptop doing this. <laughs> And then my fourth resolution was about keeping active and figuring out how to do that because I could no longer go to my Pilates class because of timings with work. And this one I've been struggling with. Since doing full days of work, I've definitely noticed that I've been a lot more sedentary. Sed sedentary. I still do a lot of walking around with Rowan. I just don't have any like actual exercise I'm doing. Every weekend I'm like, I want to do park run. And then... <laughs> It comes to like 10 a.m. and I'm like, oh fuck, park run, <laughs> I forgot about that. I still need to figure this out. I definitely wanna be more active than I currently am. Rowan's also crawling everywhere now, so I can't go to any of the like adult fitness classes that are baby friendly because it usually is for pre-crawling babies only. Need to figure out what I want to do, but then also like how and when I can do it. Should I bust out the ring fit again? But I don't actually think that that was an excellent workout. I never really broke a sweat using ring fit, but it was handy for like indoors, moving my body. We'll see. 
My next category of resolutions was about my evening routine. And the first one was having an intentional evening after Rowan goes to bed. And so far, I've just been intentional about doing those five year diaries. And I'm genuinely so excited now to put Rowan to bed and then go into the living room and be like, I could watch that thing on Netflix I've been wanting to watch. I could read a physical book or I could play some video games with my husband. Like, oh my goodness, because I've been so prioritized with transcribing those diaries. I can now do other things. My second evening routine resolution was keeping up my skin and me habit. And as I mentioned, this video is sponsored by Skin and Me, which I've now been using for maybe like six, seven months now. I basically just wanted to maintain the habit and I think we can say that this habit has stuck and I'm so grateful for it. My skin feels really good. I pretty much just don't wear makeup anymore. And in the last six months since using this, I've gotten one of those like red under the skin spots, just one. Like previously with my skin, it would be much more regular than that. Like maybe like one a month. And I remember getting it a couple of weeks ago and I was like, Hello you, <laughs> it's been a while. But Skin and Me is skincare that is personalized and tailored to your skin and goals and it's designed by dermatologists. At the beginning when I signed up, you have your expert consultation, you answer a few questions about your skin. I also uploaded some photos of my skin. There was also a question about breastfeeding, so I told them that I was breastfeeding and as it turns out, there are some ingredients or a percentage of something that you can't have if you're breastfeeding. And so, you know, if I was left to my own devices, like on the high street in the shops trying to figure out what skincare to buy, I wouldn't know that. And so that's one of the like, brilliant things about this is that it is done by experts and you are getting something that is specific to you. It is so simple and convenient. I'm someone who even before becoming a mum was overwhelmed by high street skincare, no idea what to pick or what I'm looking at. And now I just don't really have the time to dive into that and look into it myself. So it's amazing to have the experts do it for me. Thank you. This is the Daily Doser, which you get sent and it says for Hannah on it, it's for me. And one of the other great things about this is there's no confusion as to how much that you use because you just roll it, dun, 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 twist, twist, twist. And then you click and then that is how much you use. And I use this every evening on my face and it is great. I am really loving my skin at the moment. I also recently had a checkup consultation, I think because I've been using them for over six months now, so they see how you're doing. You can upload more pictures if you want, see if you need anything changing or if you're good as you are. If I'd have stopped breastfeeding, I could have told them that, but I'm still breastfeeding, so I'm on the same thing. And your next one gets delivered before your current one runs out, so it's super convenient, comes in recyclable packaging. Love it. So I have a special offer for you. You can get your first daily doser for £4.99 when you use my link and my code HANNAHWO4Y. Thank you so much to Skin and Me for sponsoring this video. Okay, my next evening <laughs> resolution is the one that I've probably failed at the most, and that is having some kind of routine around doing my pelvic floor exercises and working on whatever is happening down there. It just hasn't happened. And I think there's just too many logistical barriers in the way. However, 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 we are in the process of completely transforming our spare room slash office slash half Rowan's room into exclusively Rowan's room. And oh my God, wish us luck. We're gonna be trying to settle him for the night in there instead of in our room in our bed. <laughs> so once, hopefully, if and when that transition happens, then that will just open up so many opportunities for privacy, for time, for relaxation, in order to really focus on dealing with that. <laughs> We will get there, we will get there. And then my final evening thing was actually to use my steroid suppositories, my little bum pellets, um, in the evenings to help with my rectal stump inflammation. And you know what? I haven't, but that's because it's been fine 
and that's bad because maybe I should use it like preventatively but I'm so grateful that in the last few months I've been having no issues with it there because right after Rowan was born it really flared up and it was real bad but it seems to have calmed down now which I'm very grateful for but I still have them just in case I need it. My next resolutions were in the category of baby and I wanted to use the carrier three times a week and actually I've been using them at least six times a week because I actually use that now to take him to and from his childminders where he goes three times a week and then I might still use the carrier on the weekends or on the days where I'm full-time parenting him. So that's great. I still haven't nailed the back carry yet. I need just some time to practice, <laughs> but I haven't like had any time to even like practice that and get used to that. But the back carry, still, still on my wish list for this year. And then my other resolution was just to get into a good routine with him on the days where I have him full time. And actually, you know what? We don't have a routine on those days and I prefer it that way. I am enjoying each week making a different plan because different things come up some friends are available to hang out some aren't maybe we go on a trip maybe we go see some family for the day like there's lots of stuff that happens and so actually like having things booked in each week i think i wouldn't like that as much as the setup we currently have so there's that and then my work resolutions were to block out some time in my calendar every week to do some work reading fail absolute fail at this this is going to be one of those things that actually i'm gonna to have to do in the evenings there is no time in my work day that i have dedicated to doing my job to do any reading but i really want to because i am scraping the barrel here folks i have not spent any time on myself in terms of learning and input in so long and you try <laughs> running a sex education youtube channel without like doing your own input and learning about these things it's hard and then the other was to keep up to date with youtube videos which i've done better at because i now like watch some youtube videos whilst i'm pumping and also i watched quite a few like had them on in the background and was watching whilst doing my five-year diaries and stuff so the watch later playlist still <laughs> sits at a stupid number but i think it's under 300 now let me check no there are 302 videos on the Watch Later playlist. So we're, we're treading water. We're staying afloat. It's fine. I'm still very much currently watching videos that were uploaded four months ago. <laughs> okay, so now we're moving on to the five year plan. And I have it here on my iPad because I like scribbled it all out in a notes app. So this was before I used Notion. <laughs> I made a table that went through each year and had different categories, personal career, financial, home, fun, and then family slash relationships. So I made this in February, 2020. And interestingly, I had 2023 down as the year of like move, question mark, question mark. And we were planning on moving this year, but the market said no. And so we're staying, but that's interesting. And then also, 2021 was the year was like try for a baby slash have baby. We were trying. We were trying so hard <laughs> in 2021. I ended up getting pregnant in August. But then in 2023, it says do baby thing again. Yikes. <laughs> so maybe not. Maybe, maybe not just yet. I mean, I it's 2023 now and Rowan is about to turn one. It's not time, <laughs> it's not time. But then I made another table and broke down each category into more detail, doing what I want that thing to like look like in five years time and then what the first steps are. Let's ignore the first steps because in theory I should have done them all because it's been three years. <laughs> and let's look at in five years time because this is what, 2024, 2025? So in theory, in five years, this is what I wanted everything to be looking like, like next year or the year after. <laughs> Career, less reliant on London. Interesting. I think I'm still just as reliant Dan's career is the one that's reliant on London currently. Passive income, what does that mean? But I am flirting with the idea of making a course. Did I just say that out loud? Ignore me. Sustainable without me working 50 hour weeks. 
I mean, I'm definitely no longer working 50 hour weeks, but is it sustainable? I wanna still be flexible and working for myself, probably will still be happening, but actually who knows? <laughs> have my own brand slash business, self-sustaining. Oh man, yeah, this was like when the dream was to have something like external to me that could live on without me. Still the dream. Separate office though, we did that. We did the separate office. Okay, personal RSE training. I did that. I did a course with Asset that was in person in London and then I did an online course with IC and so your girl is a certified sexuality educator. <laughs> I wanted to do personal training. Personal training's been one of those things that I always like think I want to do and then when I look at how much it costs, I'm like, not for me. Butthole surgery. That is definitely not gonna be part of the five-year plan. It has to be part of the future plan. It's medically necessary for me. <laughs> but the doctor said to complete my family first. So we're doing that. Financial stocks and shares, pension. I don't think I'm putting any more in my pension than I was, but it still exists. Afford a family, God. Your girl didn't even know about the cost of living crisis, like when I was writing this. Retirement plan? No, there is no retirement plan. Although, however, I do feel like I'm starting to like sow the seeds of what that could look like for someone with a job like mine. But I'm, I'm 31, it's early days. And then Will, Dan and I actually did our wills after Rowan was born. We have wills. Morbid, but necessary. Home, move out of London, Manchester question mark, four or five bedroom house. <laughs> so if we move to Manchester, which isn't gonna happen, but my mum would love that. We probably could afford a four or five bedroom house, but we wanted to stay in London and Rowan loves his childminder so much, it breaks my heart, the idea of him leaving her. Ah! But we were gonna move into a three bedroom house around here and that's not happening anymore. So we stay in our lovely two bedroom flat. Family, two kids. We got one so far and we love him so much. Still happy with Dan? Very happy. The relationship is solid. Activities slash trips. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we do stuff with the family and it's kind of nice having a kid because then it just means that our parents and other family like love getting involved and hanging out with him and doing things with the fam, it's great. Fun girls halls. That's not happened. Actually, so we did do, me and my uni girlfriends, we did do a weekend away in the Cotswolds and me and one of my other friends there who also has a little baby brought our partners. No one else was allowed to bring their partners, just just the two of us who had kids to look after. And it was great. Dinner party slash board game nights with Dan. Oh man, this I think needs to be on my like 10 year life plan. Would love that. The pandemic really stalled our dinner parties and board game nights. And now having a baby has also put a stopper in those. But one day, holidays with Dan and fam. Do you know what? My favorite kind of holiday these days is the ones that my parents organize and like they're, they're going away. And then I just go, can we join you? <laughs> like you've done all of the planning and the decision-making and the organization. And then I just need to figure out how me and my family are gonna get there. And then you can also like help look after the baby. So that's my new favorite kind of holiday is the one that somebody else makes the decisions about and originally plans. And then I just go, we're gonna just crash your holiday if that's okay. Theatre slash shows. The pandemic tried to stop me but actually I have been going to the theatre quite a lot since having Rowan because my priority for my baby free time is going to the theatre. <laughs> Massages and theatre. Those are my two baby free time priority things to do. And then I think I just kind of like wrote some general themes. So this idea of like freedom and finances and career, whatever that means, kids soon, my health and my butthole stuff. If anyone doesn't know about that, this whole thing is so confusing, but I need surgery to remove my rectum, but I have to have kids first because the surgery will decrease my fertility. There's loads of videos about it. Less reliant on London for a career slash social life. I'm not ready to leave London. I love it too much, but I'd highly recommend my friend Lena's video about why she left London and how she feels about that. It's a very good video. Yeah, wow, I was really in the mindset of leaving London. I'm like living in Manchester, da 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 da. And then there's this big, star for dancing. I just really was dancing. Dancing was like a big priority for me back then, clearly. I think now, I mean, I love dancing, but then tennis, tennis kind of like took over as my thing. Um, but I haven't been able to go back to tennis since having Rowan, but I, I would love to. In terms of like 
moving my body and the fitness thing. I would just, I would love to play tennis again. When Rowan turns three, that boy's getting a racket. <laughs> I just need a tennis partner. <laughs> <laughs> and it's gonna be a three-year-old. No, we'll see. Do you know what? I feel like I need to create an entirely new five-year plan because either it's done or it's ongoing or I just don't really care anymore. Like, I don't feel like I know what the next five years is gonna look like other than like Rowan. That's so strange to me. Like, I really just do not know. I feel very <laughs> confused. So it's kind of like a case of scrapping all of that and starting from scratch with it all. I don't even know if my brain is like capable of creating a five year plan right now. I can't, I don't even know what I'm doing in the next five months. And that feels weird to me. I feel like I'm very much just on a like year by year, month by month, like what are my priorities right now? I don't even know where I would start in terms of a five year plan. Where are you at with all of this? Have you ever made a five year plan? How is that going? <laughs> Do you feel inspired to make one now? Do you feel inspired to make an annual plan? Like the one at the beginning that I made? Because apparently that manifesting shit works, let me tell you. I would also love to hear your thoughts in the comments on how your resolutions are going, if you set any this year. And thanks again to Skin and Me for sponsoring this video. You can use my code HANNAHWO4Y to get your first daily dosa for £4.99. Link in the description. I hope that you are doing well and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!